Today on Upfront, the emerging deal to pay for a new sports arena in downtown Milwaukee. Taxpayers could be on the hook for half the cost. Next, a local investor on the future of the project, the need to sell it to the public, and the risks of not doing the deal. Then, the growing dead zone in Green Bay, bigger and longer lasting every year. Congressman Reed Ribble on his efforts to save the bay. Plus, dangerous cargo. Wisconsin's Railroads Commissioner on whether we're prepared for a toxic train disaster. Covering the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with Mike Goucher. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Upfront. It's crunch time in Madison with key decisions now being made on the state's new two year budget. In Action Friday, Republicans on the Joint Finance Committee voted to cut spending to the UW system by $250 million. But debate about plans to pay for state roads will wait until Tuesday. And so, apparently, will discussion about a new arena for downtown Milwaukee. The plan came into focus late last week. It's a fairly complex deal, but basically the cost of the $500 million arena would be split, with roughly $250 million coming from the Bucks' new owners and former owner Herb Cole, and the rest coming from the public. It would include existing tax revenue from rental cars and hotel rooms, but the governor says there would be no new taxes. Joining me now to talk about the arena project is businessman Corey Nettles. He is a local investor in the Milwaukee Bucks. And a former state commerce secretary. Corey Nettles, good to have you back on. The well, thank program. you. Thanks for having me back on. Well, as you know, anytime you talk about one of these developments, there's controversy surrounding this. And, and, and you've been an outspoken proponent of this. Uh, for all the people out there who have doubts about why this is a good project for the state of Wisconsin, let me have you address them. Why is it? Well, it's a generational opportunity, and I think it's a transformational opportunity for our community. Uh, when you look at the tremendous amount of tax revenue that the Bucks as an organization directly uh, contribute to our county and to our state, it's huge. Department of Revenue said something like $730 million over the next 30 years in income taxes paid, uh, given what the current uh, situation is. That's huge. It's a major employer uh, in our downtown area, 750 some odd employees directly related to the Bucks, so that's all important. But what's being proposed here by the ownership is literally a billion dollar investment an opportunity over the next several years. $500 million related to the arena and then another $500 million related to what I'll call an ancillary development. That's all the development that will happen around the arena. So you start talking about getting a billion dollars invested into the city of Milwaukee economy. That's huge and that's transformational. So there's certainly uh, economic uh, benefits and opportunities associated with that. Lots of jobs that will get retained and created as part of that and that's important. And then the other soft um, benefits to me is if you're going to be a tier one community a tier one city, there's certain arts and cultural and entertainment assets you have to have. And that's like having the ballet and having the symphony and having the art museum. I think you also need major league uh, sports franchises like the Brewers and like the Bucks. So uh, hard economic, soft social, I think there are real benefits to having them here. Why then, after you, after you make the case, why then is this a hard sell to the public and to lawmakers. I think anytime you're talking about a public private partnership at the magnitude that we're talking about here, the Bucks have proposed a 50 50 public private partnership, 250 million private. You've alluded to that with the ownership group and Senator Herb Cole and his tremendous generosity, and then another 250 million dollars in public, state, county, city. You talk about investing that kind of public money, there needs to be a very, very healthy, robust, and constructive conversation about the investment of those kind of public dollars. And it's incumbent upon those people like me who support the project to demonstrate to the community that there is a sufficient return on that investment that warrants them making it and supporting it. Do you think we've had that robust discussion? Do you think people understand what's what's being discussed here in terms of the specifics of the deal or is, is all of this come out so quickly here in the last uh, few days that people still haven't had a chance to digest it properly? Regrettably not. I don't think that the community fully understands what the benefits are short-term, long-term, hard, soft, direct and indirect. We certainly, uh, from those of us who support it, including the Bucks uh, leadership, have tried hard to get the message out about what those benefits are. Certain of the public officials have tried to get that out there, but it's hard because the process is moving very quickly. We've got a budget deadline that we're up against. We've got an NBA deadline that we're up against. We have a construction season deadline that we're up against. So in the context of all of that, it's been hard to really get the community fully up to speed on what these benefits are. 
uh, several groups have tested, um, you know, statewide whether to do this. And when you present the facts and present the investment and present the return, we've seen that the overwhelming majority of people in the state will support it. But you got to get the story out there in terms of what the benefits are. Do you, do you think there is, is something of a, a knee-jerk reaction that we just don't believe that public dollars should be spent on these kinds of projects, whether it's a new arena in downtown Milwaukee, whether it's Miller Park, whether it's Lambeau Field? Is that just the reaction you get? Yeah, there's always going to be a percentage of that. So I'm the former Commerce Secretary, right. and I would have people say, don't go invest in corporate welfare. Don't encourage the corporation to move in Wisconsin. Don't give uh, public incentives to the company to expand here. And I think there's a very healthy policy discussion about the use of public incentives to, uh, to support projects like this. As the Commerce Secretary, I obviously believe that it was important to do that. If you have a Tier 1 corporation that's a national or multinational corporation that can end up being anywhere in the world, we want them to be here in Milwaukee. We want them to be here in Wisconsin. And the other states are going to compete and throw a lot of incentives at them to have them move to their cities, to their states, to their countries. And we don't have to compete dollar for dollar, but we have to support those companies. Because if you're the decision maker in that company and City X is going to give you a gazillion dollars and Milwaukee says, well, you should just want to be here because we're a good place on a good lake, that's a hard uh, calculus to put that decision maker in. So I respect that there are people in the public who don't believe in providing incentives and subsidies. I happen to not be one of those people. Uh, give me just uh, finally uh, your take on this, this deal. I described it as fairly complex. Yeah. It does have a lot of moving parts, so they get yeah. safe to say. What's your reaction to it? As a former Commerce Secretary, what do you think of what's being proposed? It's an extremely complicated deal uh, because you've got the city involved, the county involved, the state involved. They have different tools in the tool chest to par how, in terms of how they can participate. And whether that's tax incremental financing, whether that's floating bonds, whether that's the use of other revenue streams, uh, it is complicated. And they're all trying very constructively. The mayor, Mayor Barrett, is trying very hard. County Executive Abley trying very hard. Our friends in Madison from the governor and the legislature trying to say within the tools that we have available to us, how can we participate uh, in this, uh, in the deal. The important thing for me is it's been proposed as a 50-50 public-private venture. If you look at the model nationally, it's normally 25% private, 75% public on average, sometimes greater, uh, greater public subsidy. So 50-50 feels about right, and then it's about everyone figuring out what tools they have and what the appropriate sharing is among those public entities. Corey Nettles is an investor in the Milwaukee Bucks and the former State Commerce Secretary. We appreciate you being on the Thank program. Thank you for having me. You bet. What do you think about the arena deal as it stands now? You can tell us by liking and sharing up front on Facebook. And for up-to-the-minute coverage of the state spending plan, check out the budget blog by our editorial partner, WISPolitics.com. Coming up later on up front, I'll take a look at the political implications of the budget in the next election cycle. But first, the dead zone in Lake Michigan's Green Bay. How did it happen? What can be done about it? That's when up front continues.